When we talk about tube amplifiers, we often say that they contain high voltages that can hurt or even kill you. And that's true. If you want to build yourself an amplifier, get yourself educated first so you will know how to handle this properly without hurting or killing yourself. Now, back to the video. Things are not always what they seem to be. This is not a Fender amp replica. It's the replica of the white, higher fidelity amplifier. It was made by Leo Fender for his production manager, Mr. Forrest White. And uh, my friend and fellow YouTuber, Colleen Fezio, had one in her workshop for servicing and overhaul. And she was nice enough to give me some information about it. And I decided to make a replica. And there it is. With that being said, let's get inside and look at the circuit and what makes it tick. Let's go. Before we uh, open up the amplifier, I wanted to show you this. It's the power cable. I, I wanted something that looked vintage. So I went shopping and found that they were selling these as replacement cords for clothing irons. The three prong plug here is a European type. It's an old one because I, I wanted to have a vintage look. And it's safe. The cable is uh, sturdy. There is a three prong plug and uh, everything is fine and it looks good. Jensen loudspeaker here. It's a now nickel 10 inch four horn speaker. And as you can see on the tube layout, I called it the California because I love California. And let's talk about the tubes for a second. This is a 5Y3GT rectifier, the 6V6GT power tube and the 12AX7, which is the preamp tube. All of them were made by Sylvania. It's not done on purpose. It was what was on my stash. You can find replicas of 5Y3s or modern day tubes with uh, the JJ 5Y3S like here. And uh, TAD also makes one uh, made in China, I guess, but it's a good tube. I shall warn you about uh, Softex replicas like this one. Because uh, you see, the 5Y3GT is a directly heated cathode, while the Softec 5Y3 is an indirectly heated cathode. It's not going to be a problem on a tweed amp like this, but they're going to give you a higher B+, so higher voltages. So you have to keep that in mind. So I would stick with a new old stock or a JJ tube for safety. Once again, the 6V6 is still in production today you have plenty of choice here my favorite tubes are the TAD 6V6 GT STR and uh, they're very good tubes uh, very close to what we would get with a new old stock and uh, obviously this one is a 12AX7 new old stock a ubiquitous tube you will find everywhere you can see I used Balton tube sockets just for the good reason they are very stiff and they retain the tube very, you see, it's very strong. You don't need to use butterfly clips or retainers for the tubes. It's stiff and they stay in place. Now let's have a look inside the circuitry, shall we? My mentor, Andre, always told me that um, a good amplifier was uh, very simple to do. Uh, you need a good schematic, good components and a good build. So, uh, good schematic, although I did some modification, uh, well, it's made by Leo Fender himself, so it's good. Good components, check, I uh, will talk about this, and good build quality, well, you'll be the judge of that. The first thing I want to show you is the ground points. This is the preamp ground point here. I soldered it directly to the chassis using this as a ground bus. You see, well, we're gonna have a look. Um, this is the ground bus I'm using. It's uh, some wire here and it goes to the volume potentiometer here. I used a 200 watts uh, soldering iron to solder this onto the chassis. Some people they like to use um, eyelets, connectors and nuts and I don't like this because uh, well when you get corrosion underneath it the ground connection is worth and some of the people rely on the crimp between the jack and the chassis and once again 
when there is corrosion underneath it, the ground connection is not good enough. Uh, soldering it to the chassis is um, a very nice solution, but you need a very strong um, soldering iron. But anyways, the other ground point is over here. And for doing this, I directly soldered what I call a duck foot connector, just like you see in this uh, shot. It allows me to connect the power amp section ground, the center tap of the power transformer, and the two resistors coming from the heater circuit. These resistors were not used in the original fender. We're gonna have I'm gonna have to zoom in to show you. See, yeah, there, 100 ohms resistor, and they try to simulate a center tap on the heater circuit. Leo Fender used uh, directly one lead of the heater circuit connected to the ground and uh, the one other lead to the tubes. It was working fine when uh, tubes were metal, like the 6V6 and metal. It was working fine because um, the outside of the tube acted like a shield. But I found out that this technique, that using 200 ohm resistor, reduced the hum drastically. This is the power transformer you see here. Well, the power transformer is the one from a Fender 5F1 because uh, I found out that although some people think the white amp is um, like a 5F2A Fender Princeton, it's more than likely a 5F1 with a tone stack. Colleen was nice enough to send me the schematic, but I decided to use the power transformer from a 5F1. It comes from TAD in Germany. They are selling them in Europe and you can find some equivalent with Mojo Musical Supplies in the US. Talking about Mojo Musical Supply, in the output transformer over here, I painted it red myself, comes from them. And here you can find that there is two tabs on the secondary. One is for the 4 ohms and 8 ohms, and the 8 ohm lead is connected to the negative feedback loop. So this is the power switch I decided to use. It's a DPST, a neutral wire that goes to the power transformer. This is the live wire, and it goes to the fuse holder and back to the power transformer. The ground wire is connected here on the, to the chassis with uh, the shield from the transformer. This transformer has an inside shield, but maybe yours won't, but this is it. The ground wire here from the plug, power amp grounding, and the preamp ground. Now let's talk about the components. These are the filter caps made by FNT from Germany. Very good quality caps. I used some a bead of silicone underneath them just to prevent them from rattling inside the amp. This is a Nichikan caps capacitor. I was looking for uh, Nichikan uh, high voltage caps here, but I wasn't able to find them. Jupiter signal caps here. Um, I'm not generally using Jupiter caps. I uh, usually use uh, Mallory's or uh, Bichet, but these ones are Slightly more expensive, but hey, there's only three of them, so that's not going to be a problem. This one is from the tone stack, combined with a silver mica capacitor. Obviously, we have switchcraft jacks over here and CTS potentiometers. Resistors are your carbon film, classical Zycon carbon film over here, except here. A metal ox sign for the cathode resistor, so 470 ohms, 5 watts. And here you can see this blue one, it's a metal film, it's a 10K resistor. And obviously the pilot light is blue, because let's not forget that is, this amplifier was originally made for... Yeah, Mr. White! Exactly, Jesse. And now we have a shot of the inside, the wiring. I tried to be as clean as I could. And um, let's put it back together and hear Matthew play in my amplifier at Omega Music Store.
that's it for this video, the white amp replica here. I um, have to say thank you to Colleen once again for all the information she provided. Uh, thanks to David and Matthew uh, from the shop Omega Music for their feedback and the sound samples. They were nice enough to allow me to use in this video. And uh, I'll see you next time. Be seeing you.